welcome to this special conversation between myself, Matt Neglia, the owner, editor in chief of nextbestpicture.com and Next Best Picture contributor, Daniel Howitt. We are talking today about CinemaCon 2024. That's right. Uh, just wrapped up a long week covering CinemaCon, but uh, loads of movie news, loads of teasers and trailers and previews. So yeah, definitely lots to talk about. More specifically, though, we are going to be talking about the award season contenders that you got previews of from CinemaCon. Like you saw some trailers, Howard, for some movies that we're not going to see these trailers for months. Yeah, oh, definitely. Um, I mean, there were absolutely look CinemaCon. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen a misunderstanding of what CinemaCon is. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to talk about the awards contenders. But CinemaCon has a really unique kind of proposition. This is for this is a convention a literal like convention for theater owners for the yeah. national association of theater owners hilariously enough named nato um and they are so this is literally anybody in the theater business so theater owners uh people who sell concessions uh projector companies like all, all sorts of things um involving the theater business and the reason we get all this movie news is because all the studios show up to this convention to kind of promote their product to theater owners and say, hey, here's all the things that we're giving theater owners in the next however long, you know, year, year and a half, whatever, um, to kind of say, hey, look, you know, Warner Brothers has a big year coming up. You should definitely make sure you take all these movies from Warner Brothers into your theaters because we're going to help support you. So that's kind of the proposition. So because of that, what are the movies that make the most money? Blockbusters. So for the most part, the CinemaCon news is is centered around the big, big earners. So we didn't get teases for tons of award contenders, but definitely a lot of the high profile ones. So not every studio is covered here because like you said, it's the major studio. So we're not going to see stuff from A24 or Neon, but some of these other specialty uh, studios that um, are run by some of the major ones like Focus Features under mm -hmm. Universal or Searchlight under Century Studios or, you know, things of that nature are, are going to pop up here. You're not going to hear, though, from streamers like Apple or Netflix or anything like that. So any yeah, those of those are dirty words. titles. Yeah, the streamers are kind of dirty words uh, yeah. in, to this audience because they are theater owners. They do not take kindly to this, you know, streaming centric business that Hollywood's going towards. Yep, totally understandable. So when we look at it from that standpoint, every year there is going to be some sort of big theatrical film that finds its way into the award season conversation, whether it be for best picture or if it's for best visual effects. So we do have contenders to talk about here. And like I said, you got a sneak preview of some of them. I do want to start off with maybe some of the lower uh, profile ones that are not like, say, across the board contenders. So what's something that like stood out to you that you thought to yourself, maybe that's a visual effects nomination. Maybe that's a sound nomination. Maybe that's a whatever nomination. <laughs> Yeah, well, in my heart, it's an across-the-board nominee, uh, but in reality, I think Twisters is probably just just has one or two <laughs> nominations it's gunning for. Uh, yeah, Twisters, it looks so sick. Uh, it looks so good. In the footage that they that they showed us, which I don't think they've released what they uh, showed us last week, it was just an extended trailer, basically. Uh, they're shooting freaking fireworks into their tornadoes. What? Why? I don't care who who cares. It's fireworks in the tornado. I don't need to know. So uh, it it looked amazing. So yeah, I, you know, visual effects, sound, maybe. Um, you know, we'll see. It it could totally get blanked out, but you know, sure. we'll see what happens with Twisters. I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, no, me too. I think that's going to be the perfect summer blockbuster film in a lot of ways. Um, was there anything on the level of say? I'm trying to think of like lone visual effects nominees uh did disney have anything that like 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 a christopher robin or something you know where it's like mixing live action with uh cgi anything like that 
Nothing like that exactly, uh, but of course, something coming out in less than a month, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Sure. Uh, that, that's to me, I mean, all three of the other ones got nominated, right? Did any of yeah. them miss? Um, so I think I think Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes looks like it is just as jaw dropping as the other as the other uh, the the earlier trilogy. I mean, they showed us a solid, I think, ten to fifteen minutes of apes, and man, it just it looks yeah. great. It looks really phenomenal. The visual effects are just as stunning as it used to be. So, uh, yeah, I I can't imagine why this wouldn't get nominated. Another thing from Disney though that probably seems like a, a visual effects nominee depending on how things shake out is Mufasa uh Mufasa a Lion King story uh yeah. so Barry Jenkins was there to talk about it and was actually pretty convincing if I'm honest with you you know everybody's out the first one sucked you know let's be real yeah no, the it first was live terrible. one is terrible I've been telling uh, people though in Barry we trust <laughs> we do trust Barry and he actually kind of addressed it he said something I'm gonna butcher his words but to, to, to the best of my memory he said something along the lines of he asked you know what am i doing here why am i directing this movie um and he said he knew in taking on this movie it's it's i think his words were it's a massive fucking film and so he said his job was to take this massive fucking film and and imbue it with a lot of heart and so he knew that he knew the scale and he knew his job and so that really was convincing when the way he said it was like, wow, maybe he knew the assignment and uh, maybe he nailed it. He teased original songs, which could also be contenders. He said he's not allowed to tell us who sings them yet. So I Ooh. assume it's a big name. Okay. Um, so we could totally be looking at. Uh, at, a, at a Does it get any there. bigger than Beyonce who sang for the 2019 maybe, film? Maybe it is Beyonce. I don't really? know. I really don't yeah. know. I don't know who it is, but. Uh, yeah, so visual effects for sure, and then possibly song, depending on how things shake out. Sure. Yeah, I have uh, a deep, deep hatred for the 2019 Lion King. And the 1994 Lion King is one of my favorite movies of all time. So, of course, a lot of mixed feelings here. But at the same time, yes, Barry Jenkins is, I, I for me, it's like one of those things where I do not care about this film. I do not care about seeing this done again but he's such a gifted storyteller i have to believe especially too. nicholas Bertel is working on the score uh, for this film wait too. a second i didn't know that they didn't mention that is that yeah. true mm -hmm. okay okay yeah. that's pretty good yeah yeah and you know I, what they I showed think it's us going to be something i think it's going to surprise people i genuinely i like even okay i know eternals doesn't have that many fans out there <laughs> But we could argue that Eternals was a mixed reaction where there were fans yeah. and then there were non-fans. So what it's like, comparison. it wasn't a complete disaster. <laughs> I'm not expecting this to be a complete disaster from Barry Jenkins. I think you're right. And I do think there's the 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 benefit of it not being a story we know. Whereas mm -hmm. the first one was like weirdly kind of a shot by shot, shot for shot remake, but like like, way worse. It invited so, those comparisons. Exactly. So... Now, I will say the trailer, the, the extended footage that they showed us from the film, uh, I mean, the visuals, as expected, the visuals are, are stunning. I yeah. mean, the visuals are incredible. Uh, I they didn't still get go a into sense. the whole photo reel, uh, no realistic thing. Now, I, I, that's the thing. It was, a, it was a trailer cut to music, uh, so we didn't get, I'm not even sure off the top of my head, I, I can't remember if we got any, like, speaking on, on like, on camera. Um but I will say I didn't get a sense that there was much more emotion in their eyes and in their like kind of in the soul of the character than in the first version. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I, I am I did leave it a little bit more hopeful than I started. I'll say that. OK. OK. <laughs> All right. Well, should we go by studio by studio? Is there anything sure, else we're from on, Disney? Yeah, yeah we're on century? Disney. So we're on Disney. So, you know, um, there's, of course, kinds of kindness uh, coming out. That's obviously the worst contender. Uh, sadly, they really didn't show us anything. They, ju they just aired the trailer that we've already seen. Uh, Here's so my thing was... about that film. <laughs> I know that Dogtooth was nominated for Best International Feature. I know the Lobster got a screenplay nomination. Killing the Sacred Deer didn't get any nominations, but it was liked by critics enough and definitely, I think, helped uh, Barry Keoghan's career at that time, too. 
this movie, I while on paper, until we see it, we have to consider an awards contender because Yorgos is just coming off the heels of poor things. He's had back to back award season successes with that and the favorite. I get it. I completely understand why we need to label it as such. Just my prediction. I think this is going to be dark and utterly fucked up like those other films I mentioned that are not written by Tony McNamara. So it's like, I just have a hard time seeing the Academy as much as they have embraced Yorgos lately, embracing that side of him um, on the level of favorite and poor things. Maybe it gets a thing or two here or there. Maybe there's a standout performance, maybe the screenplay, you know what I mean? Like who knows, but across the board, I, I can't see that happen. <laughs> I'm with you. I, am like the academy where i respect dog tooth the lobster and killing of a sacred deer but i don't really love them very much at all uh but i really do like the favorite and poor things where i i'm surprised so you know we'll see we'll see how i like it maybe the academy will fo follow suit um yeah. you're going to can right uh yeah. So so you you'll have eyes on it before before yeah. the rest of us. So mm -hmm. I'm curious. And to I see. will be very honest with people if I think if it is one or not uh, based on that screening because I even remember watching The Lobster in 2016 and I do specifically remember thinking to myself, man, that is so weird and out there, but it's such an original concept that like like the screenplay nomination felt like there was a path for it, you know. Yeah. Um we'll see. <laughs> we'll see yeah. just how yeah. far they are willing to go for him. Uh, and also, too, maybe it's not like those other movies. Maybe it is something completely new that we haven't seen from him before. Totally. Yeah. Uh, that uh, was, as far Searchlight, as like, yeah, that ahead. was that was really it from Searchlight that felt like a true contender. Okay. Um, so as far as Disney overall, we already talked about Apes. Um, the, the only other uh, presumed nominee that with that is there was Inside Out 2, which, of course, is going to get nominated. Sure. Will it win? Question mark. But uh, it's it's at least going to be considered. So um, they showed us the first 35 minutes, minutes, which coincidentally I had seen two weeks yeah. ago. Um, I don't know when this video is dropping, but uh, we're, we're releasing a first look at that uh, on Tuesday, the 16th. So um, so you'll have a more full reaction to it then. But I'm going to be honest. It's great. It, the first 35 minutes, at least I can't vouch for the whole movie, yeah. but at least it starts off really, really strong. I'm very good. into it. I've seen I've seen that first act twice now. And does it feel uh, like it's, it's retreading over similar themes or does it feel like it's doing something different compared to the first film? I think it, it really threads the needle actually perfectly where it's similar enough that you're not jarred by it being something completely out there. Sure. Uh, but it is uh, it's properly maturing the characters again at least i'm judging the first act who knows where yeah. it goes from there but judging from the first act it it feels like it's adding enough it adds you know the new emotions that you've seen in the trailer are great and really yeah. what they're doing with those characters uh is is really phenomenal uh they have this thing about a belief system they're adding like this a belief system to riley oh. which is interesting um it's it's like maturing with mm -hmm. the character so I'm really digging it. I'm really digging it. I think I'd be shocked if it, you know, goes totally off the rails from what I've seen. So I think it's guaranteed an animated feature nomination. Other than that, I'm not sure I can tell you it's going to get a score or a, you know, a picture nomination or screenplay or anything like that. Sure. But uh, animated feature, animated feature, I can't imagine it it losing. But I mean, I'm sorry, animated feature, missing a nomination. But speaking of animated feature, though, when it comes to Disney, there's Pixar. But then there's also Disney Animation Studios. And I understand they've got Moana 2. They're they positioning sure that as their big contender this year, right? They sure do. Oh, boy. For yeah. you to be making that face. <laughs> you. You. Yeah, of I, all people. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. What what, what gave you this vibe? Here's the thing. Uh, to be fair, I'm over-exaggerating a little bit. Uh, okay. I think what they showed us is fine. Okay. But that's it. it they showed us uh an extended clip from moana of her singing like kind of what i presume is like maybe the opening song uh similar song to the first film where she's just kind of going back to her village and like it, you know saying hey here we are i, I believe the song yeah. is called we're back um it, it it's fine uh i to be fair i don't know if i'm just prejudging it because it was a tv uh it, they were making a tv thing for for disney plus mm -hmm. and they decided to turn it into a feature 
Um, so I don't know if if that's in my head, but the animation did look worse. Mm-hmm. Like it looked like TV animation for Disney, you know? So maybe if I hadn't known that, maybe I wouldn't have thought it because it doesn't look bad. Um, but I don't know. And then the songs, they don't have Lin-Manuel Miranda back and you can kind of feel the magic missing a little bit. The song that they showcased us was boring, bland, typical like yeah. pop Disney that's just un, un you know unremarkable. So I don't know. It looks fine. I'm sure my kids will totally love it and watch it a million times. But I'm I'm not excited for the movie yet. And what they showed me didn't get me excited, despite the rock being on stage. So did yeah. they um say who was doing the music for it? I don't believe they did. They at least didn't make a thing of it um, on stage. I don't know if they've announced it elsewhere. Uh, who's doing the music? But yeah, it was it was just a- average. Well, you know um, what? I mean, some people will probably rejoice over Lin Manuel Miranda not being a part of it too. I mean, but let's be real. That's what made the music special of that sure. movie, you know. And so, and same with Encanto. So, I think you know. Look, it's easy to make fun of Lin, but he made those movies special and. I don't know if they can do that again. We'll see. I, you know, I'm always rooting for it. I always hope that it's good. I love the first Moana. I think the first Moana is so good. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, there was at a different presentation an animated feature that I did get psyched about. Oh, yes, yes. The Wild Robot, a part of Universal and DreamWorks uh, presentation. That movie looks incredible. It now, looks did they really show more good. than just the initial teaser that was shown? Because the teaser itself was already stunning. Yeah, not a lot. They showed they showed an extended, I think, a, the next trailer that they're doing, maybe. Okay. I, I think they showed us like a five-minute extended trailer. So not a ton new, but uh, it's just as stunning. That animation looks gorgeous. Uh, yeah. It looks amazing. Um, the story seems... I, I don't get a, have a strong sense of what the story is exactly, but it oh, seems really? like it's more reflective and okay. uh, kind of like... A, more driven by like appreciation of nature and the wilderness. Yeah, see, so, like the teaser, I didn't really get a sense of what the story was so much either. But at the same time, I was thinking, okay, just a teaser. When they release yeah. a full length trailer, we'll get an idea. But you're telling me you saw a five to six minute trailer, and you still are also <laughs> like, I really a don't l- know. You're going just bit. squarely off of vibes here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the vibes are strong, so yeah. I'm gonna go off of strong vibes. But a little bit. I know that the story is about a, a robot made for city life who somehow, I don't know how, gets lost in the wilderness and kind of like like a jungle book situation, kind of like acclimatizes to the, to the forest. And then um, when they try to rescue him or take him back or, or uh, the robot back, uh, then it fights back with a lot of the the robot, I mean, animal friends that it makes along the sure. way. So, uh, but the director was there with Lupita Nyong'o, who voices the robot, uh, and the director was saying he, he took inspiration from the landscapes of Miyazaki, the animals of Disney. Uh, and he said one other thing that I can't remember off the top of my head, but I was so in. I mean, I, I'm I'm very excited for that. It's kind of hard for me to imagine that uh, not being our front runner for animated yeah. feature at this point. So very excited for that. I have it in that slot as well. Um, I know that when Inside Out releases in June, uh, you know, that might change things a little bit. But for now, um, I would say Wild Robot is definitely also my front runner too. Were there any uh, theatrical documentaries shown? I know that that's a rarity nowadays because most mm-hmm. docs tend to go to streaming. Yeah, shockingly, there was. Um, uh, they they typically don't uh, yeah. promote documentaries here. I was very surprised. Uh, but actually, they promoted a, a doc that I believe you've seen, yes. uh, Superman, the yes. Christopher Reeve story, which is it, uh, is it a is it a legit contender here? How it like, I think you're going to love <laughs> I this movie. I, the I, trailer that they showed the us thing. was phenomenal. If I'm being completely honest with everybody, and I, I know those who heard our Sundance recap probably already know this, too. I do think it is going to be very similar to the Michael J. Fox still where it's going to be a huge hit. It's going to be super popular. Everyone's going to love it. And then when it comes time for it to get nominated or win, the Academy is just going to be like. Yeah, for some reason, they just don't like these types of documentaries. I don't really know why. It's very strange to me. (laughs) They like to go for very artistically daring documentaries but also super international like they love international documentaries and so 
I've gotten to a point now where I like, you know, can't take these types of films seriously anymore as the front runners or yeah. even if they start winning all the critics awards i just i just can't anymore yeah. if but it the gets the time, nomination this movie made yeah. me cry it was extremely well done um i think it's going to be a pretty big hit when it drops i got that sense too um uh, both because of the trailer that they showed which i don't believe is public yet but the trailer no. was you could hear sniffles even in the press the press area you know yeah. um and the the uh the way that they presented the the documentary it's warner brothers has it and warner brothers is releasing it into theaters which they made note of yep. um james gunn introduced it first of all oh, wow. via video he was via video video and then he he had his partner peter safran come to, on stage and did a, a really extended push for this film for a documentary yeah. Uh, and they they said that when the film premiered at Sundance, James and Peter were the ones who lobbied Warner Brothers to get it. They said we wanted to make sure we did everything we could to get Warner Brothers to pick this up, sure. so that you know, because it fits in with the you know the the whole DC Studios thing. So, um, the, I'm I was just kind of shocked at the whole presentation. They spent a good I don't know five ten minutes on a documentary, uh, yeah. so I was very surprised by that. Um, but yeah, that was the only documentary explicitly pushed um focus features mentioned a documentary and didn't show us anything it's called piece by piece it's the about pharrell williams yes i don't heard really know this. anything mm -hmm. more about that they didn't show us anything they just no, mentioned no it and i that just was know it. like the basics of it <laughs> yeah so it's something about lego it's like his story told through legos yeah that's all i know <laughs> so I, i'm uh, you know, very we'll curious about it that's for sure but outside of that, nothing else. Uh, no other documentaries were, were even mentioned. Now, I know this is not the place for something like this, typically, and it's super rare, if so, because I just never see studios backing international films. But you didn't see anything like that, right? No, nothing. No, no international or foreign language films at all. Yep. Yeah, because it's not the place. Even um, DT, which which Focus picked up from Sundance, which I love, yeah. um, which is not a foreign language film at all. But um uh, that wasn't even uh, covered. Like they didn't even mention, I don't believe they even mentioned it by name uh, yeah. on stage, which I was really disappointed about. Uh, so like even, even a, a very American film like that uh, wasn't mentioned. So much less a foreign language film, not at all. Isn't it weird that there would be movies that are coming out throughout the rest of the year from these studios, but they don't get a shout out at CinemaCon? That's like it odd, is, yeah. right? It is very strange. Now you could wrap that under the fact that it was focus features, which just gets like a little tiny amount of time from Universal's yeah. overall presentation because they're wrapped up in one. Um, but yeah, that was that was a little strange. Uh, even stranger, I, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but Sony did not have a presentation this year. They skipped, uh, which was very strange. They yeah. did provide. Uh, wait, are they behind the Fall Guy? No, Fall Guy is Universal. Never yeah. mind. Uh, but they did send their offshoot Crunchyroll to have a presentation uh which i'm not a big anime guy um so so that was a little bit lost on me but i appreciated the presentation which basically consisted of uh their their uh one of their their chief executives coming out on stage and basically pitching anime to the movie theater crowd i really appreciated his style he was like look here is a, a product that has a dedicated fan base that will attend these screenings many times and bring their friends and bring their other friends mm -hmm. um, and kind of saying, look, this is good business. You may not understand anime. You may not personally be a fan, but this is why you should bring it into your theaters. And it was just a really compelling presentation, even though that's not really my genre. So yeah, I was, I was just um, appreciated that approach, even though uh, they didn't, they definitely didn't, uh, promote anything that felt you know like Susan May last year they talked about they talked about and celebrated Susan May they even celebrated the boy and the heron which they yeah. distributed in some parts of the world um but uh nothing nothing that will be a contender this year was was promoted I'm, I'm still hung up on the fact that we didn't get a preview for Craven the Hunter from Sony no. <laughs> yeah nothing not they totally skipped or or at least they allocated their entire time to, to Crunchyroll which is very yeah. very interesting very interesting choice so we mentioned a couple of different studios here, uh, but I actually want to go to a film that by all accounts is not going to be an award season contender this year, but who knows? There's still so much time that maybe things shift, maybe something happens. And that is Bong Joon-ho's newest film, Mickey 17, which was originally supposed to already be out this year. Mm -hmm. 
Did you see a trailer? Absolutely. We saw a trailer and an, and an extended trailer at that. And it looks hilarious. They The trailer leans hard into the comedy, which I was a little surprised by, especially because yeah. that first little, the short little teaser that they have of Robert Pattinson uh, that was out, you know, whatever, like a year and a half ago or however long, uh, felt serious. Uh mm -hmm even just that brief little thing. So for this trailer to be as funny as it was, I was really shocked by, um, uh, obviously so this is going to be what along the lines of Okja in terms of his tone. It, it actually, I don't know if this comparison makes sense. It makes sense in my head. It mm -hmm. kind of felt like a Lanthimos, uh, film okay. it, when I was watching the trailer, except like sci-fi, um, like just the way it was blending, like, Sort dark themes, dark storyline, and even dark sort of sci-fi elements, kind of like poor things, with um really broad humor, really like yeah. it genuinely hilarious. So I kind of feel like it's gonna be that sort of comedy, which Okja is is a little bit in that vein. Um, but yeah, that's 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 kind of what I was feeling. I was very surprised by how funny it was, but it it worked great. I mean, the trailer looked looked phenomenal. Um, but with that combination of genres sci-fi and comedy uh the, both of those genres are are not don't get along well with the academy so sure. uh with the january 31st release date 2025 you've got to assume they picked that release date to do a qualifying release right i mean you just they have to they have i mean to. we thought that about the bob marley one love movie and that didn't turn out to be true so true true i i don't know i i can't even for visuals, I mean, the visuals were stunning. So even for like visual effects, mm -hmm. why would you not do at least a qualifying release date to just get considered there? I think it would pick up a handful of nominations based on the trailer If for crafts, if nothing else. Even if the movie isn't very good, yeah. it, I have no reason to think it won't be. But um, yeah, I, I'm still leaning hard that it's going to have a qualifying release date. But I mean, date. maybe part of it is because two Warner Brothers this year is just stacked with already... Dune Part Two, yeah. and then the upcoming Furiosa Mad Max uh, saga and Joker Folly Adu, which they showed previews for both of those. I imagine. Yes, yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty stacked on the like big budget heavy hitter um, uh, campaign there. So, uh, you know, I do think Furiosa and Joker feel more weirdly likelier contenders than Mickey Seventeen, even mm -hmm. though it's from Bong Joon Ho. Um, Furiosa looked great. I know there were there were some concerns after the first trailer dropped. Um, they showed us another extended look at that. Man, the visuals look great. The visuals yeah. look really good. It I was won feel... over by the second trailer that they yeah. released for it. The first one I was a little skeptical on for sure. But also, too, Mad Max Fury Road is one of my favorite movies of all time. I think yeah. it's the greatest action film ever made, period. Yeah. So this has so much to live up to that I already know it's probably not going to live up to those expectations. Then you kind of throw in the fact that it's a different DP and, mm -hmm. you know, they are trying to capture the same visual look. But at the same time, you can tell it looks slightly different. And I just wasn't fully on board with that first trailer. The second trailer, what really got me was the glimpses that we got of Chris Hemsworth, who looks like he's having literally the time of his life yeah. playing this character. I was like, you know what? If he's going to be all batshit crazy as the villain of this movie, I'm all in for that. Yeah, and it looked like he's kind of playing like an apocalyptic, you know, desert Jesus sort of vibe. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Like, so yeah, he, I think he's some sort of like prophet sort of character that people are kind of like rallying behind is what it seemed like. Uh, so yeah, he does look like he's having a good time. He and Anya Taylor Joy and George Miller were all there at CinemaCon to tease the movie, and it, it I, I was won over. Now, do I think it's a Best Picture and Best Director nominee like the first one was? I think it still ha it has so much more to prove this time around sure. than the first. The first film was just a shock. A, yeah. It was shockingly good, and it and it cracked those categories. This one now it has to prove itself. So. Uh, but I have no reason to doubt the crafts. I think the crafts uh, look look stunning. So I think if it's a modest box office hit uh, with some decent reviews, I think we're at least there. So now well, Joker, obviously, yeah. you all saw the trailer. They released it right after they showed us. And um, I, I've seen really mixed reactions. I guess that's to be expected from a Joker sequel. Right. I, as somebody who's pretty mixed on Joker, and I don't think I've watched it since 2019, so I probably need to revisit it. Um, I was kind of 
I would say I was mostly won over by this trailer. I think this trailer showed more promise than not. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the visuals are just as stunning as the first one was. For all my problems that I had with the first film, the crafts were not any of them. I think it looked great. The score was incredible, production design. So uh, this one, to me, looks just as stunning from that perspective. Yeah. So, you know, I, I kind of feel the exact same way as Furiosa. The first one was nominated out of just this weird conflagration of things where it just kind of all came together at the right time. Will that happen again? I don't know. I think it will be a huge box office hit though. So probably more, definitely more than Furiosa. It's easily going to make over a billion dollars. And I suspect I'm thinking for both Furiosa and for Joker, I do think that they are going to get like nominations. So my current you know, sight unseen, crystal ball is Furiosa gets in for its crafts, as mentioned before. Obviously, a lower nomination haul than the first film. It misses out on picture and director. Joker, I could see getting in for picture again, but I don't think Todd Phillips gets in for director this time around. Um, I could see Joaquin also missing, um, but Gaga gets in this time, and I do think it gets less craft nominations. So maybe it ends up being instead of an 11 nominated uh, film, like the first one, maybe it's like seven or eight, you know, instead. Um, Yeah. I think what Joker benefits from is it's releasing in the heart of it's releasing wide in the heart of Oscar season. Um, And so that just benefits it in terms of timing and is going to be a huge hit. Um, uh, you know, what's interesting is it's, uh, you know, the last one released in 2019, the year before an, uh, an election, this one's releasing right around the election. Sure. I don't know if that will affect it. I do feel like politics affected the first one a little bit, at, at least. So um, I don't know. I just don't know how, how that plays into it. Uh, uh, you know, how like bros will kind of like rally around it and kind of think the Joker's their guy. I kind of feel like that will happen again so i don't know i'm curious to see how this turns out i definitely won't i'm not saying there's no work no way in the world it gets somebody for picture i think it totally can happen um but yeah i i definitely feel confident in the crafts the one thing that stood out to me this time around about the crafts other than the cinematography which was pretty amazing i thought from the little that we saw here um you remember how the first film didn't get nominated for production design? It got like nominated for literally everything else but production design. I forgot that. I forgot that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking this time they might get in for that this time yeah. around because, yeah. you know, the musical fantasy elements might play a, a role in that, I think. Definitely. Definitely. Um, besides besides that, I mean, Warner Brothers, like I said before, is going to have, I think, a big year uh, regarding their contenders. But I want to move over to Universal and Focus because they're hot off of Oppenheimer. And so they obviously are going to do their damnedest to put their best foot forward with what they've got this year. Um, And, you know, the year before they had the Fablemans, too. So, you know, they're no stranger to any of this. They're also one of the few major studios that still uh, takes. I don't want to say like risks, I'll say calculated risks, but they still back like our tour filmmakers in in a large way here. So. What did they have that made you go, oh, yeah, that? Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot. I mean, uh, the the there was Nosferatu for sure. Uh, from from like Focus I said, features, calculated risks. <laughs> it is a risk for sure. Um, do I think it's going to be awards contender? Yes, I just don't. yes, I just don't. Uh, do I think it could get a couple nominations for crafts? Yes, but man, that's what I'm like- saying. That's fair. That's fine. It looks straight up horror. Like it doesn't look like he's pulling punches. It's not like some sort of elevated horror situation. It looks like it's a straight up scary movie. Um, I loved the trailer. I loved the trailer. I don't know when it's going to come out, but it, it's so good. Uh, they hid Nosferatu from us. He's not in the trailer, which I love. Good. And I I hope they do not reveal mm-hmm. him until, you know, until after the movie comes like, out or whatever. Seriously, don't even reveal it in a still or another yes. trailer. Like, I would say use that as your marketing to get asses exactly. in the seat. Yeah. Have have literally, like, a, a poster that, like, is conspicuously blank. You know, like, have, like, a whole room with not a person in it. And it's, like, tease that you're hiding Nosferatu, you know? Yeah. Uh, but the trailer looked good. It looked really good. Um 
yeah, will it be will it be up the Academy's alley? I don't know, but the the, the production design looked amazing. Um, you know, we didn't get a glimpse at the makeup, uh, of course. Like I said, you've got to imagine the makeup is phenomenal mm -hmm. too. Um, so yeah, the cinematography looked great. So I, yeah, I'm I'm pretty pretty in on Nosferatu, even though I'm not sure that it's a real contender. Now you're um, saying it's like a straight up horror movie. But you did just say a second ago, it's not like giving you the vibes of what you would call elevated horror. Um, I'm curious to know if you think back on the presentation for the trailers for his previous movies, The Lighthouse, The Witch, and uh, The Northman. How does this trailer fit in with those other three? Does it look more mainstream than those films does it look like it's right at home with what those films were presenting like how does it fit hard to say hard to say i think that's a good question i think uh it doesn't look as immediately weird as the lighthouse like okay. the lighthouse you could tell you could tell from the trailer oh this is something weird <laughs> like, yeah. you know uh which hey got nominated right so yep. cinematography um, exactly so you know uh northman looked it was more was more traditional for i mean it's kind of when you watch it it's a little bit weird but it's more traditional sure and so i kind of feel like this will be more in line with the northman where okay. he's he's taking a, a a pretty scary subject but making a more normal more accessible accessible is a better word than normal <laughs> um more accessible uh version of this story um so I don't know. It's a little difficult to tell. The tra it was more of a teaser than a trailer. So like we didn't get deep into the story. It's it was more images and soundscapes than anything. Okay. So you know we'll we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. But it it looks great. I'm very excited for it. I'm sticking by my prediction that this does get nominated for something because all season long everyone's been like that's not being nominated for anything, and I'm like no 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 you wait and see. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well now so now another another film a huge contender from universal that they they spent a lot of time they spent the majority of their presentation uh or that's not true they spent a good deal of their presentation toward the end on uh, is uh wicked yeah so comes out thanksgiving um now on its surface i i don't think it's immediately a contender you know uh, musicals just haven't been hitting in the same way that they used to uh, in the last something like 20 years, it's really only been West Side Story uh, as far as stage adapted musicals. Of course, you have okay. La La Land. Um, so there just hasn't been a lot in the years since Chicago won Best Picture. Um, and I don't think anything I saw with Wicked changed, changed my mind on that. I think it looks good. I think I'm into it. I think it looks good. I think the production design certainly is stunning. And uh, I noted... They, the whole cast, Jeff Goldblum, Ariana Grande, Cynthia Erivo, Michelle Yeoh, Jonathan Bailey, they were all there. Um, and they, almost all of them explicitly talked about like the tangible sets and the real stuff that was there and real props. Like they were, they were all highlighting this. And so that was just interesting to me that they were all taking time to note the, the production design. So, now, is that because you didn't like get a sense of that from the footage you saw? Because I'm not no, really I did actually. sense. Really? Yeah. They, they showed us an extended, a long trailer. I think they showed us like six or seven minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I did get a better sense of the tangible nature of the set um, okay. than I did from the first trailer. Now, of course it is chock full of CGI. So it's sure. not like this is some Christopher Nolan stuff here, but uh, it, it definitely, you could feel like they were real people in real places. Yes. You know, lots of backgrounds made of, you know, uh, constructed with visual effects, but I really did. I really did get a good sense of the tangible tangibility of it. You know, yeah. um, will that translate to a production design nomination? I don't know, but I do think it benefits from presumably for what it looks like having a lot of production design you know it looks like it can qualify in that sort of the most production design kind of camp in terms of gunning for a nomination so we'll see outside of that uh they didn't talk about adding an original song you know how musicals sometimes do yeah. so i don't know about that uh sound i mean the fact that they split this thing over two films they have to add some new content i imagine good i don't know i they i really don't know um yeah they barely talked about it being split which i also mm -hmm. found interesting and none of the marketing materials say or at least the ones that they showed us say part one uh or or anything like that yeah. so i found that really interesting i don't know how they're going to market it um 
But yeah, so I don't know. Visual effects is certainly in play um, because obviously there will be a lot of it. We saw the flying monkeys and they looked fine. They looked they looked good. Um, sure. Not not Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes good, but they looked good. So what about like from a costume design standpoint, I know. Oh, absolutely. Thinks of the two lead characters, but you know, when you think of like the extras and stuff, like I'm totally. sure that has to be. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely got a sense of a lot of same thing where in this extended look that we got we saw a lot more of the tangible costumes like i didn't at least in what they showed us didn't get a sense of a ton of like uh you know digital extras um so i felt like there were large crowds that were all yeah. decked out in you know gowns and different things and so um yeah so i was i was like i said i i was pleasantly surprised by the trailer i don't think it's an across the board contender by any means but i do i'm taking it a little bit more seriously now especially given the release date thanksgiving sure. is a really solid release date so yeah that's kind given, of where i'm at with uh, this talk about you know shooting things practically and real sets and things of that nature uh did you get a chance to look at anything from beetlejuice beetlejuice yes uh yeah they uh, a lot of the cast was there michael keaton uh tim burton monica bellucci nice uh who else was there willem dafoe was there uh which is great great to see him working with tim burton that's a match made in yeah hell probably but um uh so yeah I, it they also really highlighted all the physical uh, production design it was very interesting that both of them did that both films um yeah highlighted uh tim burton joked about how they were acting opposite like the stop motion uh shrunken heads uh like they did in the first film and then yep. they were doing the same thing here so i think a lot of a lot of production design was was heavily featured uh, and they were all singing the praises of doing it that way as opposed to acting a across cgi so yeah, I, I, I think that looks solid. I'm not the biggest Beetlejuice guy. I like it. I don't have a nostalgic attachment to the first one. So I'm kind of like, I'm kind of whatever about this new movie, but I appreciate it looks like visually looks really solid. So anything that I, can somehow remind me of the greatness of what Tim Burton used to be versus what he has become yeah. in recent years is a-okay in my book <laughs> yeah and i got that sense i got the sense that it is a little bit of a return to form to tim burton it almost as they were highlighting the production design it, it, i almost got the sense that he was kind of saying that like look mm -hmm. i'm back to my roots i'm back to doing things this way the real the weird like the stop motion characters in the middle of this live action stuff that looks really weird but like in a great tim burton way yeah i got the sense it was almost like him kind of like trying to convince us like no guys i'm back like let's like let's take this seriously like old tim burton sure um i do want to end with your top two from your list that you put out so before we do get to those two big ones um was there anything else that comes to mind that we haven't uh touched upon I think I think we talked about just about everything. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about these top two. Oh, you know, in terms of major Oscar contenders, one thing we didn't talk about was um, the presentation from Angel Studios. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> look, uh, look, Angel Studios was there showing us what they got. Um, it was very interesting. And, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yes, praise. I don't know if they're going to be Oscar contenders. I just have a sneaking suspicion. I'm not sure that they will be. But, you know. I'm sure they believe. Okay. Okay, I do have to share a story. Real, I'll make it really quick. I do have to share a story about Angel Studios. Okay. Fine. Overall, the presentation was fine. Yeah. Um, I think the movie theater owners were were on their side because genuinely thinking about this from a movie theater perspective, quality yeah, no. of the movies doesn't really matter. They put asses in seats. I get exactly. it. Exactly. They really butts. If we're talking about Angel Studios, please. Um, so uh, <laughs> watch your mouth when we're talking about Angel Studios. <laughs> so, um, so they uh, yeah. So I think they were doing a, a good job, honestly, of convincing of like kind of proving their case. Like, look, we we had a hit with uh, with Sound of Freedom, which they did. Um, yeah. They they had a sizable hit. Uh, if you're just looking at the dollars and cents of it, um, and they were kind of saying, look, we're going to do this again. It was kind of similar to the Crunchyroll presentation of like, look, yeah. if you cater to this audience, we will get butts and seats. And so. Um, and then they and so there were there were the it felt like you know there was applause to the to the trailers like the, the theater owners were on their side and then they showed it uh, showed a piece from uh animated film coming out next year called David about well, David from the Bible David and Goliath right and um 
it looks kind of it looks whatever it looks fine for a low budget animated movie whatever uh but the thing is then they start saying going off and saying it's going to be the biggest animated animated film of all time and there were literally laughs in the room like they were laughing at them because here's the thing like do, do you not know how much the biggest animated film has grossed? Like, do you just not know that it's $1.5 billion? Listen, maybe, maybe they're <laughs> equating it to the epic scope of the Bible and its biblical proportions, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, it really made me question, like, dude, you work at a distribution company, a national movie distribution company, and either you don't know how much the biggest animated film of all time is grossed, mm-hmm. or you have no genuine expectation of what your movies can actually gross like do you or actually maybe not know they're gonna inflate the budget and make it the most expensive animated film of all time <laughs> yeah i don't know dude it was very strange so um they hired yeah, god was... as a consultant and his <laughs> fee is pretty high so here's my advice if anybody from angel studios is watching this guys just chill out like if you had gotten up there and said we are committed to having this gross 200 million dollars that would be a massive success like sure. that would be a really strong gross but now that you've set this up it's a failure if it doesn't gross 1.5 billion so i just don't you're hurting yourself i like just keep it realistic and then we it, it's fine like you can just calm down Alan, they, they they prefer to be the david versus the goliath in this situation <laughs> i guess so i guess so well good luck with that best of luck all right so the two big contenders. Uh, let's end on Focus Features Conclave uh, from our guy Edward Berger, who uh, previously directed All Quiet on the Western Front, one of my favorite films from mm-hmm. that year. I was very, very impressed by it. Was really, really stoked to see what he would do next. And from what I'm hearing, this is a, uh, I guess, like uh, the plot synopsis sort of reminded me of the two popes a little bit, but I mean, I'm sure it's vastly different than that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it's much more in line. What it reminded me of is the, oh, I forget the name, the Robert Langdon, the um, Da Vinci Code yeah. uh, stuff. Um, so this is based on a novel that I've not read, so I don't know the story, but it's something about uh, the Pope dies and all the Cardinals get together and have to select a new Pope. Yep. Uh, led by Ray Fiennes. He's leading the process. And then he discovers some dark secret. I don't know what the dark secret is. And then stuff goes crazy. So okay. that's the plot. They showed us the trailer. Um, you know, again, it was focused features. So they, they had just a brief, a brief amount of time to talk about it. So they didn't, they didn't say much, uh, but the trailer looked good. Uh, this is one of those movies, you know, every year, every good Oscar predictor, uh, has a gut feeling early in the season, right? And this is this is my gut feeling that I I really feel strong about this movie that it's going to be a contender. Edward Berger, as we saw, is a phenomenal filmmaker, and so uh, the cast is great. Ray Fiennes, uh, John Lithgow, Isabella Isabella Rossellini, Stanley Tucci, great cast, uh, and the trailer looked pretty thrilling. It looks it looks it, it, I felt like it was hitting the right balance between stuffy enough. Mm-hmm. uh and thrilling enough does that make sense where it's yeah, like, I mean, like stuffy they, they're marketing it like it's a thriller of sorts like almost the way i'm the way i'm imagining this is that i'm guessing it has a vibe that you would get from something like spotlight where yes. it's like sort of marketed as a thriller dramatic moments let's highlight yeah. the actors i'm not expecting this to be like a visual tour de force i mean visually how did it look though it did look very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It wasn't screaming cinematography nomination, but it was. It looked good. Um, yeah. So we'll see what's in there. There were curiously, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not misremembering, because I saw 1,800 trailers last week. Uh, I believe there were like explosions and stuff like that. So it does get, you know, it it does veer Wait. into like real thriller. Wait, what? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So it's like it's somewhere in between. I'm somewhere between like a stuffy. Uh, like and i don't mean that as a negative thing but i mean like an academy friendly kind of stuffy drama uh and like legit thriller so um yeah it looked good to me man it looked good it you know ray fines hasn't been nominated what since schindler's list i think right so 30 uh, years patient which wasn't too okay okay. wasn't too far after that yeah almost 30 years long time Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's time for, for him to be back at least for a nomination. We'll see, you know, it, I, there's a case to be made that he could win, uh, to, you know, based on an overdue narrative. So 
Yes, Did I feel good about have Conclave. A, um, like a baity moment that for him or um it's hard to say it's hard to say i couldn't tell i'd have to watch it again to to be able to judge that but but i am excited for it yeah i'm just like imagining did he have like his they knew and they let it happen <laughs> like moment <laughs> not quite not quite no but it uh, does look very good i am really uh stoked for that one i i genuinely like believe like you when we were uh, being asked, like immediately following like last year's Oscars, oh, like for shits and giggles, tell us who's your like your number one. I just put that at number one because I thought to myself, well, Blitz is the one that everyone's going with. I'll just yeah. treat that like Killers of the Flower Moon and say it probably makes its way in there. But, you know, I'm going to go with something a little different. And that was the one I went with. And when I heard the reactions from CinemaCon about it, it completely validated, um, you know, how I felt about it which I'm glad to hear all the things that you're saying. I'll be curious to see like, you know, what the final end piece is. Like you said, explosions and conspiracy yeah. and like how deep does this hole go? Uh, very interesting. But yeah. at the same time, you know, Ray Fiennes, man, like that's a guy who really, really deserves another nomination. Definitely a win at some point. Um, what a consistent, great presence he has just been for so many years. I would, I would love that for him. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But yeah, you, uh, my number two pick on on my top ten contenders uh, is the one you wanted to wrap up with here, also from Universal, a film that I have been doubting. It's another. This is a year of sequels. Uh, you know, sequels to Best Picture nominees, and it's Gladiator Two. I've been doubting it. Ridley Scott, let's just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, very hit or miss. A lot more miss than hit recently. And so I've not really been super excited for it and very much been doubting its awards chances. And, Man, I, want to and I want to just clarify something too. Universal distributing international Paramount Pictures stateside. Sorry about that. Yes, you're yeah, right. Yeah, it was Paramount. Yeah. My bad, my bad. Uh, yes, it is Paramount in, in the States. Um, I... Uh, this is the film that has kind of stuck in my brain the most since CinemaCon, especially in terms of like changing my mind for a movie that I was kind of like, ah, oh, whatever, prove it to me. It proved it to me uh, based on the footage we saw. We saw an extended trailer. Um, so, man, this has the same visuals of the first film, which sounds like the obviously, but well, it is shot by John Matheson, who did shoot the first one. Totally. And I think what I expected was for this to be drowning in CGI, you know, made almost 25 years after the first one. I kind of felt like this would look too modern, too chock full of CGI. And of course there is plenty of visual effects in this. Don't get me wrong, sure. but it looked great. It just looked really good. It looked like the first movie right, in the so best I, way I possible. I need to clarify this then, because this is the thing that I'm like getting already held up on and I probably shouldn't, but I like, this is where my brain's going. I'm one of those guys who just believes film looks better than digital, just the mm -hmm. way it is. It's maybe because it's what I grew up on. Um, I actually think Gladiator is a stunning looking movie, even all this time later. We reviewed it on yeah. the podcast uh, pretty recently, revisited it, and it held up for me. Um, and the thing I'm nervous about from a visual standpoint is like, okay, fine. Maybe from a color grading standpoint, maybe it looks the same or something like that. But does it have like this sort of like glossy like sheen to it of like hey yeah we shot this on digital like Man, or are I mean, they or are they shooting it digitally and trying to make it look like film and that's what i think they like are the trying first. to match the look of the first film as much as possible okay i really do so now i watched the trailer one time uh in a big room uh sure. funny enough we're in the coliseum at caesar's palace <laughs> um, <laughs> watching this so they made a whole show of that which was great um so yeah it's a, a little hard for me to judge that but I can tell you, it looked like the first movie in the best way possible. So it looked great. The visuals that looked amazing. The um, kind of the the tease of the story looked great. They had the gladiators fighting. They had like naval battles in the Coliseum, which okay. was amazing. Wait, wait, they wait. Had... I'm sorry. In the Coliseum? Not with me in the Coliseum, but in in the movie in the Coliseum. Yeah, that which is true. They used to do wait. that. Wait, so yeah. you're telling me they put water in the Coliseum? That's that's a true story. They really did that. And, they, and the Coliseum they was big that. enough to fit boats that they could have yes. battles. Yes. That is actually, that's, that's factually true. Like, they actually did that. And it looked great. Uh, see, that's my point, though. 
of course that whole thing i'm sure was done with visual effects but it like it looked good um yeah and then they were also fighting elsewhere you know fighting uh like freaking rhinos and monkeys and crazy stuff like it was awesome um but more importantly like especially in terms of the awards conversation uh denzel was in the trailer like crazy uh he he's very much taking on a supporting role in this or at least that's what it felt like um to where it's it's very easy again i'm only i only saw a taste of his performance of course but like i was getting the sense that he's gonna have a strong enough presence that i think he's a supporting actor contender um also in the supporting side of things joseph quinn is playing kind of um kind of joaquin's role in the first one where he's the crazy emperor but he he's going like super crazy and he was eating it up like he looked insane uh so props to joseph quinn he looks great in the movie fred Uh, hedger is also uh playing a co-emperor alongside yeah they're like brothers i think yeah Uh, but they they barely showed him obviously he's not as high profile a name so maybe that's why things i mean yeah so um so there you go so i think that's why they showed a lot more joseph quinn but um he looked great and then of course uh pedro pascal and uh paul maskell they they kind of teased like a sort of a head-to-head between the two of them um i didn't get an exact sense of what the story is but man it looked really good the cast is incredible and i just i'm just shocked at how into the trailer i was truly i've been doubting it and doubting it and doubting it and man now i'm really into it so of all the movies at CinemaCon to like really win me over or at least get me to from a negative to a positive gladiator 2 kind of kind of took the cake there so lucius uh who was portrayed by spencer tree clark in the first gladiator film he's being played by paul mescal in this film and it sounds like he completely uh disavows his like inheritance and title and like he's living a secluded life in the wilderness and did the trailer like give an idea as to how he gets like roped along uh, back into the world of like ancient Rome and the Colosseum and stuff like that? It didn't exactly show, but of course it was hinted of him getting captured and then okay. kind of, much like the first film getting captured and then, uh, you know, getting roped into being a gladiator. And then his um, mother is still there. Yeah. Like I got the Nielsen? sense. I got the sense and she is, she is in the f- film. Uh, I got the sense that she doesn't know, that it's him um uh, i that might be wrong that's just the sense that i got from the trailer and then i also got the sense that pedro pascal's character is the sort of uh person who starts as a gladiator and Mm -hmm. then rises to general uh so they show him like leading leading a, a, a battle um so, or I don't know. I don't know if that's just how it appeared to me. Maybe it's reverse. Maybe he's a general. I, I heard it's who reverse. Gets... He's, he's okay, like okay. doing the Maximus route where he once was a general sure. and now he's a gladiator. Um, which that's another thing. Then I'm starting to wonder: is it going to just like tell a very similar story as the first film in that regard? Then? It could. It could. Which you know, uh, you know that that could be a. It could be too similar, but um, you know, there's only so much you can tell from a trailer but I can tell you that I was wowed by the way it looks and the way that it feels. And uh, it really felt like going right back into gladiator. So very, very impressed. And, and it got me, it, it gave me the sense, especially how we see how, you know, Napoleon still got nominations this year, despite, you know, pretty mixed reviews. Um, yeah. So with this, this is obviously going to be a bigger box office hit than that, than Napoleon was. Um, so if it can at least match the reviews of Napoleon, if not much better, I, I think it's at least getting a handful of nominations here. I mean, I'm still nervous as hell that this is written by David Scarpa, who did write Napoleon and yeah. All the Money in the World, which I actually didn't think All the Money in the World was actually that bad. Yeah, um, no, it's good. But Napoleon, I was definitely very mixed on. And that's the thing about Scott is that he his films are only as good as his screenplays are. Yeah. And I always find, especially when I hear him talk in interviews, that he definitely has the right intention behind everything that he's doing and what he wants the story to be. It's just that I I hear him talk about like what he intends a lot of times. And then that's not what translates to the screen or it doesn't yeah. translate as successfully as you would think it would. And so I feel like maybe sometimes his rushed production process. I mean, the guy just is a workaholic. I don't know when he ever rests. <laughs> You know, maybe that has something to do with it and he just goes too fast through everything. I I don't know. But, you know, the one thing I want to know specifically about this one. You say the visual effects look fantastic. 
you know, you say there are rhinos and monkeys and things like that. Are we talking like fantastic? Like there's just an abundance of it or does it look like photo real? And like how, like it looked good. It, again, yeah. I'm talking about glimpses and trailers. So sure. it's a little hard for me to like do a deep dive into how good it looks. Mm-hmm. Um, but all I can say is it looked believable. Um, uh, the rhinos more than the monkeys. I, you know, I'm sure rhinos are easier to get right in visual effects than monkeys. Sure. So, um, but yeah, it looked good. It looked thrilling. It made me stop and go, I am really excited to see this battle right now. <laughs> so, okay. uh, so yeah, I, you know, we'll see how the final product looks. I'm sure they're still, I'm sure they did those visual effects just for the trailer. So it could look completely different as sure, they're, as they're doing their final edit. But yeah, I, I was into it. 86 years old. 86 years old, and this man is doing this crazy shit still. 86 years old and putting Pedro Pascal on a rhino, you know? Yeah. What more can you ask for? You just say that, my God. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, all you have to tell me is Pedro Pascal on a rhino, Gladiator 2. Sold. Derek Jacoby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Sold. Did did we see Derek Jacoby? Any glimpses of him? I don't remember seeing him that okay i could be wrong i just don't remember seeing him. okay okay well and we, that that sounds pretty amazing to me i can't wait for the trailer to hopefully drop soon so we can all get a glimpse of what it is that you saw here um overall how would you say like this year compared to previous years that you've been at CinemaCon? it was good i think uh there were there were things that were better things that were worse i think the um there were a lot more stars last year. Uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, I do think CinemaCon is in a transition period where it's getting so much more global attention than it has. And so I think they're, I think the studios are trying to find their foothold. Uh, for instance, Disney's presentation this year was great and really thrilling and exciting. Yeah. Um, but it felt like a, it felt like a Comic-Con presentation, the way that they were teasing the Marvel movies Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, it it just felt a lot more like they were catering to the press and social media reactions and fans yeah. more than the theater owners in the crowd, which is exciting as a fan and as a journalist. It's 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 thrilling, but I kind of feel like it betrays the spirit of CinemaCon, which maybe that's makes me sound like a dork. I don't know, but I felt I feel like uh, you're there to. Uh, to talk about your movies and why theaters specifically should care and why theaters should look forward to these products. And that's the spirit I want in these presentations. And um, some of some of the studios did that very, very well and highlighted their relationships with theater chains and things like that in, in really incredible ways. And I just felt like Disney didn't. Uh, there were some times where they did, like Barry Jenkins told a great story about working at a theater and how that convinced him and helped him apply to film school. So that was a great moment. And so he said something to the effect of, you know, treat your employees really well because one of those theater employees is going to be on this stage in 10 years. So I loved moments like that. But overall, I just uh, felt like that's the spirit I want to feel from all of these presentations. Um, and I felt that last year and I felt it a little bit less this year. But overall, it was it was really exciting. I, I love covering CinemaCon. I love that it's here in my hometown in Vegas. Um, and so that makes it really that makes it really nice. So looking forward to, to being back again next year. Well, I think I speak for all of us how it when I say to thank you so much for your coverage during the CinemaCon presentations, lots of tweeting. Uh, you were very, very on top of writing article recaps uh, immediately right after as well, which all of our viewers can check out on nextbestpicture.com. How it spent a lot of time going into those, um, in, into films too, that were not touched upon in this conversation. So highly urge everyone to check that out. How it, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with me about award season contenders that may have emerged from CinemaCon. Uh, tell everyone that's listening right now where they can find you on the internet. You can find me on Twitter at HowitDK. And you can find me at Next Best Picture. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you all next time.